Hey guys, here we are, the Quiggin' Out MMA Podcast, and I've got a very special guest for episode number 30, Mr. Devon Anthony, who is better known to the MMA Twitterverse as the MMA Predictions Rapper. How you doing, man? <laughs> doing all right. How you feeling, brother? Pretty good. I know you were excited about that intro. You're like, oh shit, he's still going. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, all that, all that. <laughs> so for anybody who's been living under a rock and hasn't seen what you've done, I mean, you take the entire card from top to bottom. And I don't mean just the main card, just the prelims. You're even doing the early prelims. And you've turned it into this musical masterpiece where you've, I don't even know how you do it. I've watched it over and over. So like, talk me through that process. Like what made you think, you know what, I'm going to do this and uh, keep it going. Well, um, initially I had an idea that I just wanted to rap about fighters. Right. Um, and I thought like, okay, maybe this is going to be like a silly idea. Like I've told the story a few times, but I, I thought it was going to be a silly idea. And, um, I went to the gym one day and a coach that's normally telling me, nah, man, just, just try it. Just try anything. Cause I normally do funny videos and stuff like that. And he's like hella supportive. He doesn't care what idea I come up with. <laughs> he's like, go ahead and go ahead and give it a shot. Just give it a shot. I'm like, all right. And then one day I think for the first um, card I did, I forgot which UFC card it was, but. No, no, no. That wasn't for a card. It was just a freestyle. The concept was if I rapped about my favorite USC fighters, did that, and then Twitter's kind of just went like kaboom. And I'm like, wow, because I've never used Twitter before, really. Um, <laughs> like, I've, I've had a Twitter account for years and never posted. So I was like, oh, so this is, this is how this goes. All right, that's cool. And then when I started thinking about, okay, maybe I could do like predictions because I like talking about, you know, fights with friends, but it's so many people doing predictions out there. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. It's like, it's so many cool channels out there that I listen to daily. And I'm like, I'm not going to just <laughs> James <with> Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. James Lynch, uh, <laughs> fight night picks, all those guys. Um, but, uh, I said, what's another way I could do this? Well, I tried the rap thing about my favorite fighters. What if I wrap my predictions? And I just thought of like a weird, like a silly old school rap cadence in my head. And I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Um, uh, and then I started thinking like, okay, what's a question? Like what's, what's something I can bring it all around with? And then came the who you got thing. Cause that's what you normally ask your friends. Like, hey, who you got on this fight? Yeah. Who you got on that fight? Uh, who you got with this basketball game? You know, things like that. I was like, that, that's it. Who you got? line here line here line who you got line here and i'm like oh okay yeah yeah, okay let's uh let's see what i could do i made some rinky dink beat and <laughs> i just i put it up there and um it, it was just so much fun seeing how, how many people were like down with the idea and um how much support it got i'm like wow i kind of felt bad because the first time i did it i forgot uh which fighter it was he's from um uh I said he was a Russian and he was not Russian. He was a uh, <laughs> he was um uh Rama uh I'm gonna remember his name. He beat the brakes off of um Cowboy Oliveira. That's all I know. And it's funny because I chose him at first and then I switched up and said the cowboy was gonna win and then he whooped Cowboy's tail. And I was like, see, that's what I get for calling him Russian. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm looking, now I'm looking. I'm like, let's see. Yeah. Um what is Last name is like Rama. No, 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 no. Hold on. Uh, Charles. Let's see. We'll say Cowboy Oliveira. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to see like his last. I think it was like his last. His last time out. Cowboy. Cowboy yeah, Oliveira. you type in Oliveira and you're <laughs> Cowboy. You're like, oh shit. Let's yeah. let's just talk about the fact that Cowboy Oliveira yeah. and I are the same age, and he looks so much older. <laughs> Dude, he does. Rachmaninoff? Oh like, no. Yeah, Rachmanov? there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying it right either. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, isn't he like from Kazakhstan or something? I'm like, oh, I screwed up. <laughs> Especially considering Russia and their relationship. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah, it was like, and it was funny because I got, um, I got uh, told about that. It was a bunch of people commenting, like, to the point that I had to, like, throw my phone to the side because I was working on something that night. And I'm like, why is my phone going off like this? And it said, Twitter, you have 98 notifications. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, 
And then I'm looking through. I'm like, wow, people like this. And then one guy's like, that guy's not Russian. You're a fool. I'm like, uh, clearly. Uh, <laughs> Listen, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I mean, that was, we're talking like four months ago, five months ago that that happened. And it's yeah. blown up. And I'm seeing you everywhere. Like, the who you Dude. got, you know, for the last one, and then bringing James into it, I was like, "This is so uh, cool!" Like, yeah, dude. I, first, I knew it was going to be a a really good card, and then I I was just thinking at that point, like, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to a couple of guys, like the first couple guys that really um like welcomed me to the community, really, you know, uh, because um." Oh, like I said, it was just a big surprise to me that anybody liked it. So I reached out to James, and James, he's down for almost any anything. He's like, "Oh no, for real? Let's let's try it. Just tell me what to say. I'll uh, I'll go for it." I'm like, "Okay." And uh, I gave the lines out, and they came through. That was fun. <laughs> well, and I'd love for you to talk about because you're not a member of the media. You know, you're not a fighter. You do train, but I want you to talk about like what has your experience been dealing with. The media aspect of it. So obviously with James, you know, anybody who knows James, he's probably the nicest guy on the like the planet. He's so calm. And like you watch one of his lives and he'll just be like, no, that's a stupid question. No, no don't. Yeah. Don't. And he'll just be like, get that bullshit out of here. OK. Anyways. And he'll just move on. And mm -hmm. you're like. Well, that wasn't even mean. Okay. OK. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's really funny. And uh, for me, um, when he messaged me and uh wanted to interview me i was like me really because i've been watching his videos prior like mm -hmm. to that so i'm like this guy first of all I'm like he knows who i am like of course it's like okay he's not a mega star but he's still big to me like you know so i'm like interview me for what oh, okay well let's see what's up and i'm like yeah this guy is cool as a cucumber just smooth <laughs> so but um was i gonna go with that Nice people, I, I MMA idea. media dealing with the people <laughs> like deal with the fact that you know four or five months ago, mm -hmm. most people didn't have an idea who you were, and I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, oh, they probably they knew you in different. Uh, I'm gonna say it wrong, Aoxis. Yeah, <laughs> it's Aoxis. Ah, Almost no it. one gets it right. Almost no one gets it, man. But that is in no way the um the worst pronunciation. Trust me, I've <laughs> I've I done mean, live shows. Dude, I've done live shows where, um, like, me and my friends were getting ready in the back, and for some odd reason, they're like, and up next to the stage! <gasps> and they'll just say, like, the Pokemon's name, Deoxys, or something like that. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And, like, as a joke, I'd come out, get on my guitar, and play the Pokemon Center theme, and be like, yes, yes, all right. <laughs> and then Nerds. get to what I was actually doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, um... Listen, but, Pokemon uh, yeah, ended no. with 151. Pokemon ended with 151 for me. Damn it. Yes. Yes. No, like, oh, no. I'm so far removed. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. Mega Evolution. You got these guys who are giant now. I don't get it. No. I'm out. I'm out, man. Yeah. I, I'm a 90s kid, but I'm not, I'm not on the train forever. No. I remember, like, my brother would get up earlier for school. He was a year older than me. And I'd watch mm. cartoons in the morning. And I remember the first episode of Pokemon. Like, yeah. and being like, what is this? Like, I didn't watch anime. I didn't watch anything like that. Like, mm -hmm. I can't say that. I watched Digimon. Like, come on. We all, we all love uh, Digimon. We <laughs> yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Like, so, but it was like, I remember that. And it's like, now you're just watching. You go, you, you don't know how good you kids have it. And at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to have to remember all this shit. <laughs> oh, man. What? <laughs> it is nutty out here. But, um. Yeah, like as far as like the the media and everything has been gone, like going, it's all been cool. It's all been cool. Like I've had a lot of fun talking with uh, different people. Uh, for some odd reason, some people care about my opinion, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm like, look, sometimes I might say some wild stuff and it might pull through, but uh, <laughs> sometimes it's off a hunch. Um, but no, it's been pretty good. I've been able to talk to a lot of people I never thought of, you know really be able to talk to because um me i'm not the most um uh i'm not like the most social guy like uh extroverted i'm not the most yeah. extroverted guy so um me neither really yeah so really like <laughs> connecting with people like it's it, it's kind of hard like it got easier for me like while i was performing in bands and stuff like that because after a point somebody wants to talk to you but um but uh on the internet especially in uh the mma twitter or social media community 
I'm like, I mean, I could talk to a couple of people, a couple messages here and there, maybe, but I, I didn't really have a, a significant like number of people I could talk to about the stuff. And outside of the internet, it's mainly people I train with who I talk about fight stuff with. Cause mm -hmm. other than those guys, like most of my family and a lot of friends I grew up with, they weren't really into martial arts like I was. And uh, some of them still think UFC, UFC is the actual art and not mixed martial arts. You know what I mean? I'm like- I trained UFC, I'm, bro. I trained yeah, UFC. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like uh, UFC is an organization. Um, <laughs> please stop. Well, it's it's no different than listening to somebody at the bar who's like, I could beat that guy. No. No, no, no. you can't. <laughs> and, Trust me, no, you can't. And I want to talk about your training here in a second because I know, like, I didn't start watching the sport until, like, mid-2008. I had no mm -hmm. interest in fighting, anything like that. Not not at all. You know, I watched mm -hmm. pro wrestling growing up. Same. And uh, WCW, man. I love I love Sting wrestling again. I know he's sixty two. Oh, I don't man. care, man. I don't care. Look, legends never die, son. <laughs> <laughs> legends never die. But I caught, you know, I think it was an episode, probably the Ultimate Fighter, and it was Rampage and Forrest Griffin. And I'm like, all right. I mean, there's there's a little drama. It was the Ultimate Fighter, mm -hmm. and I caught an episode of WEC Wreckage, and it was. Mike Brown, Uriah Faber 2, and Jose Aldo when he did the double flying knee on Cub Swanson in like eight oh, seconds. Oh, man. And I was like... I felt so bad for Cub. <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, I kind of like this. So you figure, fast forward all the years, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't start fully training in jiu-jitsu until two years ago. Oh, yeah? And I would always watch fights and go, why can't he get up? Why can't he get, like, why isn't he just going this way? And I got put in those same positions, and I went, oh, that's why. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but they're the same size. That guy's not bigger than him. And I realized that small guys can be extremely heavy if they want to. Yeah, look, smush game is real. Like, yeah. and. Smash pass. I, <laughs> dude, I didn't know that either, like, until I started rolling around with, like, a couple of friends of mine. Like, at the gym I train at, Beta Academy, shout out. Um, like I like I've never gone to a jujitsu class there, even though they've tried to get me in there like multiple times. I'm like, yeah, you guys want to strangle me, I get it. But um, I mean I have no problem with it. I've just been like mainly in Muay Thai, but I'll roll around with some friends outside of the school, like if they need an extra body, because they know I wrestled a little bit when I was younger, so it's like, okay, I mean, I understand a little bit of position. But um yeah, no, smush game is real, and I know some guys that are even smaller than me. Like, I walk around about 152, but I know some guys smaller than me that can do some stuff, and I'm like, what the world? Why do you feel so strong, sir? And that's me, like, not happy to say I'm 270, but I've been thrown around like a rag doll by guys half my size. Look, it can happen. And it's, it's amazing, and it's like you said, you know, I just want to get in there and strangle, because I started... You know, I had a prof my professor then who was constantly, we knew each other, you know, I was covering fights and he's like, come on, Quiggins, you got to train. And I'd train for like a week or two and then I wouldn't be able to come in for a few months. And then like mm -hmm. I got a new job, so I couldn't train. Like I couldn't show up with a black eye because I was doing like child welfare. They didn't. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, they weren't, they weren't fond oh. of things like that. And then it's like I rolled with a kid. We were both white belts and he was much more green than I was. Mm. And he went for an arm bar and he did that like straight up, like tried to break my arm Ugh. and I felt my elbow pop and I went, <clears throat> all right, I'm done. I'm done. <clears throat> and I remember walking over to the side, I'm holding my elbow, just kind of sitting there. <clears throat> my, my professor goes, Quiggins, what happened? I was like, well, I got an arm bar. He goes, all right, what'd you do wrong? <laughs> And I was like, oh, well, man. I was like, uh, I didn't defend it properly. He goes, wrong. I said, I didn't try hard enough to get out of it. He goes, wrong. And I was like, I don't I don't know the answer to this. And he goes, you never should have got caught in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there was years that went by. And then finally I got to the point where I was like, I have a job where I don't work at 3 a.m. and get home at 8 p.m. 
I was mm-hmm. like, I can train. And I said, you know, I started in January of 2019. I said, I'm getting a blue belt by 2020. March hits, COVID shuts everything down. Ugh. And we get to we get to go back to training, but we all had to train wearing masks. Mm. And I can tell you, training wearing a mask sucks. Dude. So bad. Dude, let me tell you something. <laughs> I went back. It, it took me a while to get back to um the gym I train at, but when they were having they they started having like um bag circuit classes like you come in and coach is essentially trying to wear you out on a bag and um they're like all right everyone masks on i'm like i know this is gonna be terrible and by like 15 minutes in i'm like all right tavon so what you're gonna do is you're gonna focus on technique <laughs> that's what you're gonna do <laughs> well it's like you roll and you get swept there goes the mask goes flying or they go to push up and the mask gets tangled on a hand and i was like so we went back, you know, and we were we had off for three months, and I come back and we do promotions in June. And I got my blue belt, and I went, "Are you sure?" <laughs> I was like, "So then the next time I ended up rolling with my professor, we probably we did like a five minute roll, mm-hmm. and I had he just like got up and looked at me like, wh- "What the hell was that?" Like, <laughs> oh no and i was like oh god i was like he's gonna take my belt away he's gonna take my belt away and at the end of the class he's like i just gotta say he goes i hate singling people out he goes but quiggins i've never seen anybody change who they are when they get a new belt he's like that was incredible and i went oh. <laughs> <laughs> like oh god so dude i love it and it's after 10 years of watching the sport, when you start to know what you're doing, and I want you to mm-hmm. talk about that too with the Muay Thai, is that once mm-hmm. you realize, okay, they're in this position, it's not just, oh, stand up and get out of it. Um, most people don't understand that. So talk about like your martial arts background, because obviously training in Muay Thai, and I've seen your technique, that's pretty damn good. So like, oh. when did you get started? Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> when did you get started in actually training? Um, all right. So, um, when I was younger, I, I might've been about 12, 13 years old. I was, uh, studying Taekwondo for a little bit, but, uh, my parents took me out of it because, uh, my interests lied where like whatever my friends were doing and whatever my big brothers were doing, which was, they were playing basketball and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna run over here. Um, but I always wanted to get back to the arts and I had friends that trained in multiple martial arts growing up. So they would, you know, teach me things here and there and um, kind of just kept me in the realm of martial arts in general. And then in 2016, late 2016, like I just made the decision, like I, I got to get back into this. Um, I was coming off of like a little depressive state and, and I was like, I need to do something, one, that's for me. I realized at the time I wasn't doing anything for myself, really. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted something that I could be consistent with that could also tax me physically. And, you know, I would have to leave everything outside the door when I walk in, you know. So um, 2016, that's when I came in. And uh, the coaches that got me on my first day they're like okay so do you know anything i'm like i know nothing like i, I yeah, was like i'm I a clean i'm a, i am a clean slate i'm just gonna w- whatever you guys got for me you got for me and um yeah man they they're the nicest people in, in the world over there at beta academy most of the coaches that um i started there with are still there so um uh, they're good people and uh yeah learning more about fighting in general because you know when you first start in um, almost any martial art, uh, what you're doing is basically drilling and drilling and drilling until it's, you know, they allow you to spar. So especially in like a kickboxing or Muay Thai uh, situation, what they're doing for the first, you know, almost year is basically trying to tire you out. Um, So, you know, like (laughs) I'm working and I'm working and I'm like, okay, this is doing really, I'm, I'm feeling really good in here, but like my cardio was already at a certain point because I used to ride my bike to and from work and then, (laughs) <laughs> go for a run and then go to the gym. So it's like, okay, so I'm I'm pretty much good here. Um as far as uh you know, cardio was going. And then when I started getting to um the advanced classes where 
they started to let us spar and everything like that. I'm like, oh, this is where things get real, you know. Like I've I've boxed around with some friends of mine when we were younger, but we were younger. I didn't <laughs> timing timing is a real thing, and I'm like, I'm dealing with grown men right now, and they're not trying to hurt me, but what impact is real, and if you aren't used to impact, uh, everything shocks you. Like everything shocks you. Like the the difference between me now and the guy that started sparring is every time like somebody would faint, I would like either kind of flinch or it's like, oh, uh, what's he doing here? I'm, I'm thinking too much these days. Like my eyes would close a lot even while I was punching. And um, and uh, that's um, it, it's funny how I mentioned that because I was telling um, a friend of mine like a few months ago, there was a uh, one fighter. Um, on like a regional card somewhere he would he would close his eyes when he was throwing his punches and he got knocked out and i was like that's why he got knocked out if you don't see the punch coming I, it's, like like I, yeah it's the ones you don't see man <laughs> and that's usually how it goes and i it's the same with jujitsu like the first time somebody puts a rear naked choke you tap and they go i didn't even have it and you're like but you were <laughs> you were there i couldn't breathe and they're like i didn't even choke you <laughs> like you're you're thinking too much in that scenario, and yo, I I realized that really quick early on because um, I think it was maybe about three months into when I started sparring, I actually got in a round with a guy who was the head Muay Thai coach at Beta Academy. Um, mm -hmm. now and the thing is, he used to he taught the foundations classes. I had no idea he was like you know the one guy. of the guys there, and um. He's a really silly, happy-go-lucky dude. So I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to spar him. This is going to be, um, you know, probably fun. He, I know he's better than me, it's, but that doesn't matter. I'm here to learn, right? Um, but the moment that bell rang, it's like his face went blank. And I'm like, is he there? Hello? Coach Darnell? And he's, like, literally mowing me down. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> where, like, I didn't understand pressure at that time like true pressure and like that's when i found myself literally at one point covering up i was covering up like this and when i looked up i saw a foot coming this way <laughs> and i'm like oh this is why you don't cower like a fool okay well never doing that again <laughs> it's okay. amazing the things you learn about yourself when somebody's throwing a punch at you <laughs> yeah yeah, and uh, and it was like right then and there. Like I took a picture with him. Actually, it's it's on my Instagram right now. It's like he's like this, and I have a busted lip. And um, <laughs> and uh, I use that as a reminder. Like tell people like all the time. I'm like, what you think you're gonna do in a fight? Especially if somebody knows what they're doing, you're not gonna do what you think you're gonna do in a fight. Yeah. Okay. Like sometimes even if you have been training, you're not gonna always do what you're thinking you're gonna do. So like. Um, when you see people competing and stuff like that, if they're dealing with a situation that they either had no idea they were going to be in or they, you know, they probably didn't think the other guy was that good. If you're dealing with a tougher night than you thought you were going to have, you start making some different decisions, you know. So I'm like, yeah, it's it's very strange. There's a reason why people can't get up when they're on the floor a certain way. There's a reason why when you're in the clinch, it's like, yeah, you. You're not going to be able to just slip your arm out and do what you want every single time. It's no look at it, Vanderlei's different. clinch. His clinch used to be like it's him and Anderson. Mm -hmm. Like that clinch was like the jaws of life closing on you because you'd mm -hmm. see, you know, when Anderson Silva came into the UFC, you know, he destroys Chris Lieben and everyone goes eh, okay, and then he fights, you know, Rich Franklin, and he gets Franklin in that Muay Thai clinch and he just hammers him. And you're like, get away, get away. And then it's like, even being <clears throat> in a situation where you're rolling with somebody and they've got that that plum mm -hmm. on you and you go, I can't move. Like, not at all. <clears throat> and before we get too far away from it, I think it was perfect what you said. What you think is going to happen in a fight versus what actually happened. I feel like mm -hmm. we saw this past weekend. And it's no disrespect to Megan Anderson. But yeah. – Go back and watch the fight when you get a chance. And watch the first clean punch that lands on Anderson. I'm going to be confident enough to say that was the hardest she's ever been hit. Because yeah, that uh, punch, I thought the same. her face goes... As yeah, she's going she, back like... She immediately... 
that look is that same look almost every guy that got hit clean by Mike Tyson for the first time ever gave him. <laughs> and and I was – I. I kind of called it like I, I was telling some friends of mine who were watching the fight with me. I was like, look, if she gets hit clean in the first few seconds, how she reacts is going to show you how the rest of this is going to go. And it's either going to be really quick or it's going to be real long. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> And I just I watched it over and over and over. And I just went like, that's the moment. And you don't see that very often in in MMA fights. Not mm -hmm. at this level. You might see it on a regional no. promotion where you're not expecting it or, you mm -hmm. know, an unknown. Or like you said, with Mike Tyson, when he came up, everybody's just like, oh, this young kid, blah, 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 and was destroying people, mm -hmm. um, you know, hitting like a truck. So, hey, Mike, if you're out there, welcome to the show. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you don't see that usually at the high level. So, you know, when that punch landed, that was insanely powerful. It was different, man. It was different. That look, Amanda has, first of all, God-given power. But uh, the way she, the way she throws her punches, that that's how it is. If you get hit with that, that's a scary, scary situation. And um, like I've never been knocked out. I've never had my bell rung to where I've been hearing a sound. But I have seen light. So oh, it's. It's it's different when that happens. That's when you realize, you know what? I probably don't have to do this right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> Is it, can I call a timeout? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. In like uh, in a competitive situation, it's like, well, I have two choices: yell, ref, I quit, or see where this goes. And also in that scenario, you might not even be there to make that choice. This is boom. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? Oh, I'm t I'm on the floor now. Did I leave oh. my clothes in the dryer? Oh shit, I'm in a fight. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, man, that was that was something else. Like, I I really do wish. Uh, I was wishing the fight was going to go longer, and um, I did have you know good hopes for me again. Like, I I knew in my, of course, in my heart, I'm like Amanda's going to win out of. I just thought out of experience, straight up experience. Like, even if the just the idea of the power you know getting to megan wasn't there like if that wasn't there i'm like from just from experience based off of who they fought and how amanda has beaten different people um yeah i, I just thought she was going to edge it anyway you know and but, that um, was and that was everyone was talking about oh megan's so much bigger and i was like yeah and amanda throws overhand rights yes like <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm like did did you guys not see any what happened to fight. dan hooker <laughs> Did you guys not see what happened to Dan Hooker? Overhand right. I said that in the rap leading up to that. I said, unless homie can hit an overhand right, Dan Hooker should win. Overhand left it was, but still. <laughs> still an overhand. But <laughs> fight predictions are hard in that sense because it's like you have to think here and you have to think here. Because you're like, you know, when Megan came, I remember watching Megan and Invicta and thinking she's going to be a UFC champion. You know, the division mm -hmm. opens up, and it just doesn't go anywhere near what I thought it would for her. You know, yeah. she had that weird fight with Kat, and it was like the Holly Holm, and I was like, <clears throat> but then it's like, I'm not going to give too much away, because I wrote a pretty good piece about this. I'm pretty mm -hmm. happy about this, but you can tell when Amanda wants a challenge, or Nunez, and you can tell when she's bored. Mm -hmm. And that's not a disrespect, but like, the Pennington fight, the Durandamy fight, the Spencer fight. You're like, mm. but then you're knocking out Cyborg in the first round. You're knocking out Rousey in the first round. You're submitting Misha Tate for the title. You knocked out Holly Holm with a head kick. Like, what? Where? What? what's going on here? And it's just like, I felt like she wasn't challenged. And with Megan, I felt like she had to make a statement. But... Mm -hmm. That might not have been a good thing for the division. So no, I I was like, this is going to close the division. Yep. Like that's like that's just how I felt, right? And um, really, like what what Amanda's doing, Amanda is showing everyone what a champion is. Like yep. for those people that really don't understand, it's like a champion has the ability to make statements, like she did with her last fight. She will rise to an occasion, like she did in every other fight that you thought she was going to be challenged in. And then she she'll just win any other time. Yeah. Um, like so. 
it's uh she's a different type of beast she's a different type of beast you, you want to talk about one of the one of the greatest of all time hey just saying yeah <laughs> and somebody who's defended both belts yeah not and, somebody and who more than won. one time at yeah. that <laughs> more than one time like and with the exception of nico montano or montoya whichever you know who wants to pronounce her name that day um, yeah Nunez has beaten every single woman who's held the flyweight belt, belt, the yeah. bantamweight belt, and the featherweight belt. Mm-hmm. You can't discount, you know, and you've got people like, uh, we like to call him McNugget on the show. That's his. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, who wins belts and never, you know, defends them. That, to me, isn't the same as a champion. I know I have hey. no place to be like, yo, I've never won a belt, but come on, man. Like, What's the, what's the perfect way... To not lose your belt. Don't lose <laughs> never your belt. Defend Don't defend it. it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can never say they defeated him for the title. <laughs> Listen, still one of my favorite moments <laughs> is when he punched the old guy in the bar. And oh, the, God. And the only reason I say that is because that dude didn't move. He got hit and just something. was like... <laughs> <laughs> like, just go back to what I was doing. <laughs> dude, let me tell you something. So, when... That happened. I was um, I was like walking around like a uh, neighborhood I used to hang around as a kid, and like this older cat comes down the street. He's like, "Hey, hey, hey, T, you watch that old MMA UF stuff? Look, <laughs> um, uh, your boy, your boy Connor. I'm like, my my boy Connor. Okay, uh, well, like, yeah, yeah we, your boy. Yeah, I mean, we're the same, exactly. Yeah." I'm like, yeah, geez, thanks. He's like, yeah, your boy, he's he over here knocking out old men. I'm like, knocking him out? What? Like, just straight assaulting old men? And he's like, yeah, look at this. I'm like, okay, first of all, he didn't knock him out. He looks like he just got hit, but uh, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> like, bro, talk about getting to the hype of your game and going, like, height of your game and going mad. I'm like, calm down. And it, it blows my mind, too. I know we mentioned the Oliver, but I'm like, Connor's like two weeks older than me. And I'm like, you've done some really dumb shit. Yeah, it's like, homie. I'm like, you've probably on, been one of the highest paid fighters ever. And I think he's Period. been paid more than Ronda. I think he's been paid more than John Jones, Chuck Liddell, you know, Tito. Because they didn't have the kind of money they did back then. No, definitely not back then. And if you want to compare he and Ronda's, um, like cash flow like it's a little different because ronda was more of a move not more of but she was more in the media than he was uh for a good period of time for good so if things, you want to consider movies and, and yeah 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 exactly for good things like you didn't hear about ronda just body slamming an old lady like oh i would have been so sad yeah right <laughs> i mean the whole travis brown thing there was controversy with that but it's like again like the only older woman she was beating up was her mom and that's because her mom used to, like, jump her when she was a kid. And yeah, like, it's like her, her mom's hardcore, so it's like, okay, <laughs> I get it. I, for a split second, I was about to look around my room, like, is she going to pop out of a corner or something? <laughs> Just head comes in like, Beep! <laughs> You're like, what'd you say? Like, uh, I'm sorry. No, I, I just give her my arm. Here you go. I'm like, I, Just take it. I am so sorry. But, um, yeah, uh... Yeah, no, like Amanda, she shows exactly what a champion is. Like, um, dude, that card from top to bottom, this last pay per view, was something else. It was something else for me. I'm like, all these finishes in the beginning, and then look, then we've got controversy, we've got dominance, and we've got a weird fight. It was literally like a WWE like card. It's like it's like wow, so much hype around it, and then you get all these different storylines out of this. Like now, you do like because out like with the Aljo scenario, like okay, like I, I get it. It was an illegal knee. I see like the stuff he's getting online. I just said it right out the gate um, that night. I posted on Twitter and I said, "Look." You're the champion. It does not matter how you got the title. You got it. Just come back and prove why you should be the champion. Yeah. You that... could you could just Ric Flair the game. I got the title, baby. You know, <laughs> you can, just just hold the belt in the air, act like you want it legitimately, and just walk out, you know? Like <laughs> somebody just needs to to replay Look. the knee and have JR in the background going, Oh my god! Oh my god! He killed him. Dude, dude, JR, let me tell you something. JR is one of the reasons I understand, like, 
how to portray emotions like so well in anything I do. I'm like, that dude sold things to me when I was a child. And I'm like, this is insane. Because I remember once, I forgot what happened. Somebody got hit with something, but he was just like, that man has a family. And I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) I was like, he probably does. Oh, my. (laughs) He has a family. (gasps) Oh, well, it's. It's so funny to listen to him because I'm like, I remember watching Mankind get thrown off by The Undertaker. And mm-hmm. he's just screaming. And I'm like, I watched that as an adult. And it's still like, first of all, it's real. You didn't think yeah. th- getting thrown off a 30-foot tall you know, steel cage. but Not at all. JR's reaction. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's so good. Dude, he was off the rails. I'm like, did anyone tell him that anything was going to happen that night or did they just tell him to react how he would normally react to any situation that happened that night? Yeah. Like, like I'm like, was he as surprised as everyone else? <laughs> All right. He's going to throw mean, him off. No, no, no. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I mean, well, if you go by the interviews that both um, Mick Foley and uh, Taker have had, that was kind of on the fly. Yeah. Um, and uh, considering the situation, um, cause I believe there was a um interview where Taker himself he said like after he threw him off you know he was kind of like oh shoot but I gotta stay in like persona <laughs> I, gotta so I gotta look all I gotta look all angry and I'm like man I probably would have thought the same thing like oh man everyone's gonna be mad at me I probably permanently mur- like hurt this man <laughs> well his tooth went like straight through his lip up to his like that is a tough dude Fun that fact, is a tough dude one of my friends got married by Mick Foley. Uh, Cause Mick's an officiant, and Mick wore a fanny pack as the <laughs> officiant. Dude, what? So my buddy does. He does. Um, like he does a bunch of the con wrestling. So he'll dress up like mm. Negan or some like the the conventions and stuff. And he wrestled mm-hmm. for a while, and it was so funny because uh, it's gonna be hard to see, but. You can see Oh my Mick gosh, the that is him. <laughs> so they were on an episode. They did a say yes to the dress, and Mick is one that goes with her, and he's got his fanny pack, and he's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of, I'm like, it's the only time I've watched that. I promise all of you listening, it's the only time I've watched that, but it was hysterical. I wish I saw that episode. <laughs> I, I will send it to you. I will find it and send it to you. Please do. Everybody needs to see this. The rest of this podcast is just going to be me showing that episode. Oh, my gosh, man. That man has done almost everything. He, he really <laughs> has. Like, Mick, and, like uh, Mick, what have you not done? <laughs> Mick's like, MMA? I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, we kind of we kind of see how that sort of goes when guys come over uh depending depending (laughs) we had a whole episode where we talked about that because i was like first of all when i was watching wrestling brock was huge yeah and i hated brock hated brock and then i saw him come to the ufc right around the time that i started to watch it Mm. and i remember watching what was it 80 ufc 81 him versus um frank mir Mm -hmm. and i went Frank submits him, and I just went, yeah, you just learned what it was. (laughs) And then he fights Heath Herring, and he runs across the cage like a madman. And I'm like, yeah. And then that was a nice foreshadowing because he did it against Kane, too. And Kane didn't go down, and he went, oh, shit. (laughs) Kane said, yeah, okay, and? (laughs) Kane's like, this is a real wrestler. Um, I saw an article today that Brock complained in 2004 about making 250000 for a match against Goldberg. One match. 17 oh, yeah, years that ago. Was, that was supposed to be like his farewell match, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. That was WrestleMania, yeah? But like, I'm like... Uh, that that kind of sucked. Just, just a side note, that, that, that kind of sucked for both of them because... Everyone kind of knew both of them were leaving, so like the hype around it kind of just went to. And I'm like, oh well, I mean that's why they have Austin as the referee. Let's try to keep some star power in here. Yeah, well, but, as a kid, I was I was only allowed to watch W WCW. 
And then, like, my dad would leave the room, and I'd watch WWF, and I'd turn it back and go back. and Click, click. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm not going to explain it, but if you know, you know. But there was a match with Sable and Jackie. You probably know what I'm talking about. If you don't. <laughs> but, yeah. Like, they got away with everything. And you watch it now, and it's just... Even, even the UFC, like, they've gotten to the stage where it's, like, theatrics and over trash talking is what's getting you into fights and i'm going to use juliana and pena right now because i think what oh, she's man. doing is ridiculous um i don't feel like you're in a position to ask for a title shot especially knowing that you lost to somebody who nunez beat mm -hmm. two fights ago and i'm going to take this from my facebook because i actually wrote this and i want to say it right oh god the lightning lost damn it sorry <laughs> hockey fan you know um but I said, uh, <clears throat> Nunez is like, uh, the referee's going to have to pull me off of Amanda Nunez. Uh, and I said, the only way this happens is when Nunez rear naked chokes her and she doesn't tap. Because <laughs> I'm like, you can't do that. Nunez has beaten the greatest of the great. And it's not a passing of the torch kind of time. Honestly, I think she has one more fight left. I'm not going to say against who. Hmm. Hell, you know what I will say again, too? Shevchenko. I want to see a third fight between the two of them. Everybody wants to see that, man, because it's like... They had the first fight, they had the split, and I'm like, you know what? Go out there, beat Shevchenko, and be like, peace. That's it. I, that's what I would do. Look, for real, that's the only champion you haven't finished. Yeah. Like, that is literally the only champion you haven't finished. And the second time y'all fought was dummy close. Yeah. The, the first time y'all fought, it's like, okay... Yeah, I believe, of course, I believe Amanda won that fight. But, I mean, if you look at if you look at it, the way the ties are kind of turning, it's like Shevchenko was kind of catching more of a stride near the end. Yeah, so it's those, like those fourth and fifth rounds, like, like stuff starting to change. And I'm like, yeah, and, and she was still fresh. Shevchenko <laughs> was still becoming more of a mixed martial artist. Like, yeah. you know, so it's like, I mean, I say go for it. I would love to see it. That's that's the fight I want to see. It's not the most marketable fight because Shevchenko's, it'll be yeah, it'll be the fight with the most belts. <laughs> <laughs> You'll literally have three titles in a ring. Like think about that, right? Oh so, shit! <laughs> all right, man. I need titles. you to drop to one twenty-five, win the third belt, and walk off. <laughs> oh my goodness! If Amanda could do that, good God. Well. Keep in mind, though, most people don't know Amanda started her career at featherweight, so that wasn't too crazy to think that she could go up. I mean, she isn't shredded, did, 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 um, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to see her cut to one thirty-five. You know what I'd love nah, to see? Be like, listen, catch weight one thirty, winner takes all belts. Oh my! So, oh, not winner takes all belts. So if take away going up to one forty-five, well, that division, yeah, that division is gonna. <laughs> That division is going to dissipate at some point, but uh. But there's my problem with champion versus champion fights. Someone always mm. has way more to gain, and obviously we'll yeah. bring up Izzy versus Jan or Jan, uh, because on the internet people don't know the difference between J A N and you know. Oh God, it, Y A N. It was so frustrating. All these days they're like Jan looked terrible, and I was like, wait. Yawn or yawn? Like, which one are you talking about? Because <laughs> spelling them right might help us in this situation. <laughs> oh, my God. So, the Izzy fight. Mm -hmm. You know, Izzy wins. He gets both belts. Yeah. Yawn wins. He gets a win over a champion in a lower weight class. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like champion versus champion fight should happen. In that sense, because I'm like, somebody always has more to gain in that situation. And I, yeah. I, I don't like how often they're happening now. You know, Cejudo beat, beat, and I'm saying that, DJ. And I'm not the biggest DJ fan for, for you know, reasons, but he's an amazing fighter. Mm -hmm. And you, you squeaked out a win because they were in the process of trading him for Ben Askren in that one. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about, you want to talk about when politics just took over, like, yeah. I, like I, I might be a, I might be one of those people that's a little bit butthurt when it comes to decisions that close 
that just happen to go in the way of the guy that's going to stay with the company. Yeah. But um, but uh, that's kind of how I felt about it. I was like, one hundred percent, right there with you. I was like, he didn't really beat the champion, but but then he, you talks know what? About, then, I get it. And then he beats Dillashaw, and I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then Dillashaw pops, and then he fights Cruz, and Cruz is getting up blocking shots and gets this Man. fight stopped and i went what the but ref had- stopped that fight the ref stopped that fight like it was a debuting fighter against another debuting fighter and he was trying to preserve someone's career it's like that's a champion right there dude dominic cruz is a champion okay so you gotta i'm not saying you gotta let him get his brains beat out but what i saw i didn't think the fight was over now right there and so and Cruz is not one to be vocal about stuff like that. I mean, he went a little no. let off the rails last weekend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's it was a hilarious. different type of guy. I thought it was hilarious because here's the thing: like Cruz is the older guy by a bit in that situation, and he is still moving like he's 25. That movement yeah. is just insane. But for him to be vocal about a stoppage, it's it's got to be warranted. Like Keith Peterson looked like he really needed to take a dump. And he was like, I just need to get out of here. So, like, <laughs> hurry up. Stop the fight. Like, let's go. Like, I got a, I got a plane to catch. Like, whatever. Like, it's my last job of the night. Yeah. Okay. So, and, I'm, again, you know, there's all that controversy with, you know, Aljo and everything else. And I'm like, listen, did it kind of look like he was acting? Yeah. Did it actually happen that he got need in the face? Illegally, Full yes. Full force. <laughs> Not half knee like, oh, I almost... No. Straight up. And to be honest, I'm going to argue this with anybody. If you watch the Anthony Smith fight with Jones, he comes up before the knee lands. He comes mm. up a little bit. and But Anthony said the same thing. He goes, the referee's job is to stop the fight. Yep. Why are you bringing in the doctor who doesn't know this fighter, who doesn't know how he fights, to say whether or not he's good? You can make an yeah. argument that Aljo went either way. Like, I think anybody could argue that. You know, at the end of the day, people are going to say, oh, you cheated. Well, he got hit with an illegal knee. Did he take advantage of the situation? No. Was he a fighter who probably couldn't continue in that particular moment? Yeah. Think about a guy who gets knocked out and they get punched again and they wake up and they're fine. Like, dude, I've seen some flash knockouts, man. Like, and it's, you're like, it's um,. Funny. Like, and they, they, they're like, what, what happened? And there's that split moment. So yeah, did that possibly happen? Yeah. Um, I know we'll get some flack for even talking about it, but you know, Uh, at the end of the day, like I want to see Izzy focus on middleweight. mm -hmm. I want to see Jan fight Glover Teixeira because Glover's like 42 at this point. He deserves it. If there's any, if anything, his, even if it's his last fight, he better fight for a title. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's all I'm saying. Glover, since the pandemic started, Glover is is in my top five for funniest moments in a fight ever. When he's talking to Anthony Smith and he's like, Sorry man, it's just business. And Smith goes, What? And he goes, Sorry, man, it's just business. Because there's no crowd and they weren't ready for the mic to be able to pick that stuff up. And I'm just going, Is he talking to him? And then, of course, Tim Elliott this weekend. Like that. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> Keep in mind, Jordan Espinoza got cut today. Just just so you know. Oh, oh, oh. wait, what? Two and four in his last six. You're right. But you got to think that like they were like, all right, we don't need these two ever getting in, in contact with each other. Yeah, none of that. Yeah, because it was in between. What, 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 it was, was the it end of the second round. It was yeah, it was the end of the second. He oh yeah, when he called him that, oh, I was dude. like, well, so my whole thing was I was sitting. It was me and my best friend, and like I looked down at my phone for a second, and I heard what he said, and I was like, he didn't say that, but my best friend started laughing, and I'm like, oh my god, he did say that. Oh, I was like, oh, no, because <laughs> normally when some crazy stuff happens, like my best friend, he'll laugh and look at me like this. He's just like. And I'm like, oh, oh no, shit, did it, I miss it happened. Like, what? And of course, on the broadcast, they cut it out. 
like completely yeah. they were like no 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 um but if you were watching it on tv they cut it out even though james krauss dropped a legit f-bomb and they didn't catch it just saying but if you <laughs> we're, were watching all human. on espn <laughs> plus if you're watching on the app or fight pass they didn't bleep it out so people have all these these audio and everything of it and they're like a transcript and i'm just like you got to be really mad at someone to bring that up during a fight to take away your focus. And yeah, I'm bro, like, this is your job. <laughs> Tim Elliott fought. I don't want to say he fought dirty because he didn't do anything dirty, but like he no. fought old school. Like yeah. when it was OK to like punch somebody in the groin, <laughs> like that kind of like brutality. He said, I'm here like, to whoop your ass. That's what he came in. Like, he didn't come to compete. He came to whoop ass and take names. <laughs> exactly. So. I mean, like you said, the card was great. It's always good. There's always going to be controversy. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There's going to be this. There's going to be that. But at the end of the day, it was it was a relatively good card. Like you had all yeah. those finishes going, 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 going. You had Cruz mm -hmm. get back in the win column for the first time since yes, what June of 2016 when he fought. It was Uriah Faber, like UFC 199. Like that's the last time Cruz won. That's true. So I'm like, wow, it's, it's been a while. And it's even funnier because when you look at his record, he has what three losses? Like, yeah. so he's lost to Faber. He's lost to Cejudo. He's lost to uh, Cody Garbrandt. Wait, he, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. There and you I'm go. like, those those are your three. Like, that's... wait a minute. Okay, so Faber did 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 he? No, not. I don't know why I had a freaking moment. <laughs> I almost thought Dillashaw. I'm like, no, he beat Dillashaw. What am I doing? That's how he got the title back. But if you look like he's mm -hmm. won one, he has one fight by knockout loss, one fight by submission, one fight by mm -hmm. decision. Yep. Like, he's got 15 fights by decision. Yeah, he's not always been a power puncher. You know, GSP mm -hmm. wasn't finishing fights until the Bisping fight. Like, yeah. GSP, GSP was having decision after decision. Before the Bisping fight, his last finish was UFC 94 when Penn's corner threw in the towel. Like, oh my god, <laughs> dude. Well, first of all, GSP's style, like Khabib's style, is built to win rounds. Yeah, that is that is what it's built to do, and um, you know, rightfully so. If it's if it kept working, keep doing it. Like, yeah. I, I was never mad at it. I I didn't respect it early on. I will honestly say that. But but I also realized that as it went on, like, as you understand the fight game more, like, if you thought he was going to wrestle you, he would outstrike you. The cost check yep. fights. If mm -hmm. you thought that you were going to beat him on the ground, he would go to the ground. Like, yep. he would do what you didn't think he was going to do or what you thought he was weakest at. And I'm like, I still have nightmares about the Dan Hardy situation. Like, his arm was, like, twisted in a way that, like, I've been Kimura. I've been Americana. <laughs> Like my arm only bends so so much, and watching it just go, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, that's that's something you don't want to see. <laughs> I never want to see a limb that looks like it's about to snap. So, and it's even funnier because uh, when when uh, when Charles Oliveira fought Tony, oh, and god. I saw him in that, oh my god, I was like, Tony's not gonna tap, oh. and it. Tony would have like, walked is, out of there with two bad. broken arms and just been like, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, straight up Monty Python. He would have tried, tried to throw his head like this in the next round, and he probably would have lied to his coaches. If, if both arms were compromised and he went into, like, round two or something like that, and they're like, hey, you good? Yeah, I'm fine. Why, All right, why fighters, your arms, you ready? Your arms are wailing. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be Harlem shaking his way to the center. It's just like, no, you don't want to. Oh my god, did you just bring that shit up? I know, right? <laughs> Listen, I, I just even... did a wacky waving flailing arm flailing, man. Like No Like that's exactly what I just did on camera. So you're welcome. Every... Oh see yours looked a lot better. I'm Yeah. I'm like blinding when I put my arm up, so it's like Listen, new light set up, it makes me look, you know, alive. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but really the Oliver God I... I don't like to think about that fight because I was firmly convinced that Ferguson could beat Khabib. Like, I I honestly thought, like, his style would match up. Khabib would take him down. It'd be like a submission kind of thing. 
And mm-hmm. I said if they ever fought, it'd be a third round darts choke. I just thought that's how it would play out. Khabib would go in for that takedown. He'd grab it. And to see him just get mauled in that Gaethje fight, I was like, what just happened? Yeah. When I saw... So, right before that fight happened, um, another friend of mine, uh, when I started doing Muay Thai, he started doing Jiu-Jitsu uh, at the same gym. He, um... Oh, I thought my roommate was coming in. Uh, <laughs> Don't come in! <laughs> I was gonna say, hey, what's up? <laughs> but, uh... Wait. What? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Get <laughs> get a slice of pizza, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, I bought a pizza home while I was uh, getting ready to, you know, get on here. But um, no. Um, Listen, I've had kids walk in, I've had wives walk in, and people just be like, "Hey, like, what's up?" <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, when that before that happened, my friend told me he was like, "Look, Tony can lose this fight," and I was like, "Well, he can, but I think he'll pull it off mm-hmm. like he normally does, right?" That that's really what I was thinking, and. Then he told me, he was like, listen, if Justin goes out of there, out there, and just uses the basics, he can beat him. And I'm I'm like, come on, man. Like, like chill out. I'm like, Tony's not going to let someone just dr- jab, cross, hook his ass to death. And then it happened. Jab, cross, like, <laughs> jab, like, cross, hook, jab, cross, hook. <laughs> here I am looking at it like. Like deer in the headlights. Like, this is not happening. This is not. Oh shit! Oh god! Look at his like, face! No. Oh no. no! 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 I was like, no! 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 I was like, I. Why did I speak this into existence? And my friend was there that night. He's eating popcorn. Just... <laughs> but the truth was, he didn't think it was gonna go like that either. He was like, well, was I he... didn't think it'd go this perfectly. Was, but was he Nate Diaz in you over there? I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's really how it felt. I didn't want to look at him. Like I did not want to look at him. I was like, if. If I look over and he's staring at me, it's just shame. Just shame. Like, but he was just eating popcorn. Like, I didn't even think it was going to go this perfectly. This is crazy. And it's it's a wonder that Tony's still standing. Yeah. like It's a wonder that Tony is still functioning. And, I mean, they tried so hard to book that fight over yeah. and over yeah. and over. And they were supposed to do it in Tampa in 2016. And then it gets canceled. Mm-hmm. Like, they did the open like the open workouts like i was there they were both there i'm like this fight's gonna happen and it's like the next day they were like ah perforated lung water in the lung goodbye I'm like yep Look, dude it. that fight is one of the main reasons why it, it put me back on the train like you know what maybe there are some you know some different powers out here going on that fight's just not supposed to happen like look and at, look at edwards the last Oh man, Edwards and Shemaev? Yeah. See, I I'm let like, you please. say it first because I'm like, I butcher it every single time. <laughs> Dude, here's my whole thing. I'm like, well, they should probably leave that fight alone because the last time they tried to book Tony and Khabib, COVID happened. So if y'all keep trying to push that, I don't want any other type of natural nat- natural disaster to come around or something. No. Like, <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. Leave that alone. They're like, all right, we're booking this a fourth time, and a meteor is going to hit the Earth the day the fight's supposed to happen. <laughs> it's like, well, gee, thanks, guys. <laughs> they cancel it the day before. The meteor just takes, like, a turn, and they're like... <laughs> like, oh, well, thanks for saving the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dana White man, saves dude. the world, a headline we're never going to read. Some fights just won't happen, and it, it sucks because just the concept of them makes it... It sends people like on this huge wave, and that's why everyone wants to see it. Just the idea, like, okay, this style versus this style. But with the Charlie, with the Charles Oliveira fight, right then and there, I was like, okay, based off of physical strength alone, I don't think it it would have went all that well for Tony. No, physical strength alone, and um, because I thought that Tony would either like pull out a submission or potentially like. You know, cut him up a bit, and even though Khabib's never bled, yeah. that was one thing I I kind of didn't realize until like maybe the Dustin fight. Somebody had mentioned he never bled. I'm like, he hasn't, and I looked. I'm like, he has not really he been ain't cut. Getting hit. I'm like, this boy really is the Floyd Mayweather of the MMA. He does not get hit. 
Because he said that. Khabib said that. No, like, all right, he's he's goofing. He's being funny. I'm like, no, he's telling the truth. He really doesn't get hit. No. And if he does, it's it's like, oh, you hit me. Well, time to take you down. Yep. Oh, you're going <laughs> to like, throw that overhand good. right, and you're going to step on your back foot, and you're going to telegraph it. And double leg. All right. Uh, oh, to the floor, to the floor, to the floor. But, I mean, yeah, no. Like, after that happened, I was like, ah, man, that, that sort of crushed all my dreams all my dreams i was like at least leave me with the theory yeah. you know at least leave me with the theory and now you got um you got islam calling him out and i'm like i don't want to see it no no no, no. <laughs> i so, do not want to see it like islam is the real deal do i believe that he's like really the next like i don't i never want to call anyone the next anything you know some people be like oh he's a successor to khabib this that and the other but it's like do i believe he's like that next guy no i, I it's a couple of things i need to see happen but that boy's close. Yeah. <laughs> In my that mind, the close. fight I always wanted to see that can never happen and never will, it's way too late, is I always mm. wanted to see Fedor and Randy Couture. I know that was a weird oh, way. Oh, my. Yeah. The dirty boxing. I just want... Like, wrestling. Yeah. Like, that would have been a fight. And I know that I'm not the first one to bring fight. it up, but, like, that's an old school. And if you really look at it right now, if Ryzen picks up Overeem, we could see a, another fight with him and Fedor. <laughs> yeah, we'll see Uberim versus Fedor. <laughs> we'll see Uberim versus Ryzen, hey, Sweater let's Fedor. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, let's just be honest. What's going on at Ryzen? Um, <laughs> Listen, look at some of the Pride guys. Oh, at one point, Overeem was fighting two oh fivers. Let's talk about this. Like that scares the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. But then again. We talk about, you know, Overeem getting cut. I didn't think I would see that. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that was going to happen. It's like, if you look at, okay, if he had been anyone else, right, considering uh, his record in the past couple years, if he had been anybody else who got knocked out the way he's gotten knocked out, they probably would have got cut too. But because he's been around so long, people know who he is. That's why they kept him the way they kept him. And I, I kind of have a feeling like maybe he also wanted to dip too. Like uh, he wanted that like, belt, he did, but yeah, that... he really wanted the belt. But but it's like every time he would get close, monkey wrench. Like yeah. so, it's well, like at, it's very unfortunate. Look at so UFC one fifty six. Um, you know he bring you know he fights Bigfoot. He's winning. He's winning. He's winning. He loses. Then he loses mm-hmm. the next one. Then he beats Ben Rothwell. Then he loses again. So he lost three out of four. Most people at that point are getting cut. Yep. Like you said, and yet they're they're there. You know, JDS just hasn't looked the same over the last few years. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing him in bare knuckle, and I know I've in the past I gave bare knuckle a lot of shit, <laughs> but I've been to three events now. Like I've been to the events, I've seen it live, and I will one hundred percent say I would rather watch Frank Mir break Nogueira's arm a thousand times than have to hear the sound. Of a knuckle hitting a skull. It's the worst sound in the world. <laughs> like live. Because you're like what was. Oh. Mm-hmm. And my favorite oh, thing. Bone on bone sir. <laughs> my favorite thing that happens after bare knuckle fights. People going up to the fighters going. Hey man great job. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the worst thing you could do. Every single fighter. And and I'm going to give a shout out to Tom Schaff Because. Tom Tom was one of the first guys I saw. He fought Julian Lane. Mm. And he literally is like, people are coming up and fist bumping. And I went up and I was like, There like, you go. Like putting the elbow out. It's amazing how many people try to fist bump somebody whose knuckles are bleeding. They're bruised. They're like inflamed and they're blown up like the size of a balloon. And they're like, hey, fist bump, man. No. Don't handshake. To everyone listening, you meet a bare knuckle fighter after they fought. Do not try to shake their hand. No fist. <laughs> First of bumps. all, they can barely open it. Like, yeah. dude, look at you. Watched that Taylor Starling fight from the last BKFC. Her face was, and people backstage, hey, fist bump. I just can't. Like, please no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to go for like the jobs of the being like the professional. Hey, uh, uh-uh. uh, uh-uh. like, <laughs> like the handlers. 
Like, I just walk up and they go, who are you? And they're like, you just hold up a badge real quick. Like, <laughs> there you go. You just hold up a sign that's like, no hands on. Like, what oh, just, my God. Like, what do you do in that situation? So, dude, I had a blast. I don't want to keep you too late because I know we're both in the Eastern time zone. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a challenge and I'm going to give you 30 seconds to freestyle. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I am not here. Uh, Let's go. Okay. All right, yeah. All right, yo, slip left to the cut, cross fade to the bow, put the bait on the hook, tomahawk to the low, hands up for the joke, turn around for the smoke. Uh, I don't know. Boom! I just I just started talking <laughs> about a combo I'm working on. <laughs> Dude, it sounded good. And I was like, I brought up the drumsticks just so I could look musically inclined as well. So I was like, oh, oh, okay, what's the next move? Uh, 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 the hook. And then I'm like uh, trying not to change the beat, but I'm also like, I'm just, go uh, uh, okay. Listen, man, it just gave no. me, like, PTSD of, like, playing with a band for the first time and not knowing any of their songs. Dude, dude, this is going to sound, you just gave me an idea. You just get, all right. Is this, I'm gonna is message this for you about... everybody or is this for afterwards? Because, you know, we could. Oh, oh, oh dude, 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 no, I'm going to fill you in for it after. I'm just going to, for everybody, this guy just gave me an idea. But we're going to talk in, we're going to talk in the DMs on Twitter. And yeah, <laughs> well. <laughs> On behalf of myself, Combat Press, and then we've got Fat Boy Jiu Jitsu, Burtso's Bake Shop, hey! and La Barba Cubana, which keeps my beard nice and fresh. I love you guys. My Quiggin' Out shirt, Epic Jits Tees. Love it. Um, Tavon, thank you so much, man. This was so cool. And we're going to talk a little bit after this. So, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. Check out his raps on YouTube, on Twitter. I'm telling you right now, if you want a breakdown that's not only fun but actually like someone who's taking the time to do the research check him out guys thanks everybody thank you be safe